Hello, today we're going to see what is a light modifier and how you can use it in your films. Lighting modifiers are accessories like these. Now, once you understand what they are and how they work, you're going to destroy the cinematography thing. First up, a lighting modifier, as its name suggests, is anything that modifies the light. Modifying the quality of the light, the angle, the intensity, the color, any modification to the light point. So bang from the beginning, you cannot say that you cannot afford any light modifiers. You can use tons of household objects as lighting modifiers if and only if you know what you're doing. Lighting modifiers either go straight on the light or on a fixture in front of them. We usually use both of these techniques and sometimes even use them together. So you'll have a light with a Fresnel lens, which is one type of modifier. And also in front of it, what you'll have is a sheet of muslin or diffusion material just to diffuse that light coming from the Fresnel. So you definitely use them together too in everyday filming. The most commonly used light modifiers in the filmmaking industry are the Fresnel lens, the diffusion box, the diffusion cloth, the cinefoil or black wrap, colored gels, haze, smoke, foam boards, reflectors, flags, mirrors, scrims, grids, and of course, barn doors. I probably forgot like a hundred of them, but if you guys remember any other ones, just please leave a comment down below so that we can make another video about this. Let's go through this fast. Barn doors cut the light coming out of the fixture and shape it. They also help in reducing light leaks. That's why you always see that these barn doors are painted black. These ones here even have a type of matte fabric on them to cut as much light as possible and give you more control over your light. Source 4s are types of lenses that are specifically made for stage use and theatre plays. But of course, we also use them in a lot of scenarios in filmmaking. These light modifiers are awesome because they create a very focused, sharp spotlight that you could control even more through four blades that are located on the Source 4 itself. These blades create very sharp lines by cutting the light passing through that lens. To add to all of this beauty, you can even put something called cookies inside of these source fours. Now what a cookie is, is yet another modifier, which come in the shape of circles that have patterns punched into them. These cookies slot right between the light and the lens, causing the light passing through these cookies to project that pattern on the background or on the subject that you're lighting. Of course, cookies or cookaloris, which is the right name for it, are another lighting modifier that you could actually do at home. Just grab a piece of cardboard and make a pattern into it. If you want to know more about this, you can check this video up here. The next lighting modifier is more of a simple one, and it's grids. Grids are made out of black material that is shaped in the form of a honeycomb to change the angle of light and make it a little bit narrower. What they also help in is limiting the light leaks on the background when you're pointing that light on the subject. Grids usually go on the diffusion cloth as the final accessory on the light. Mirrors are, of course, a lighting modifier. What they do is they reflect the light perfectly. They're either used to reflect the light straight on the subject or to lift up the whole ambience of a scene. As you know, a house full of mirrors is always bright and feels very open. That's why whenever you have a dark corner in the house, it's always a good idea to place a mirror there so that it can reflect the light coming from the outside and spread it across the house. Black flags. Black flags are exactly the opposite of mirrors. What black flags do is they block light and stop it from reaching areas that we don't want it to reach in a shop. These lighting modifiers are professionally made of a specific type of material called duvetine that is a very high opacity, non-reflective material that's ideal for blocking light. Now, onto reflectors. These modifiers literally reflect light. They come in many different shapes and sizes, from pop-up reflectors to 4x4s and 12x12s and foam boards covered with foil. All of these work in the same concept. A light hits the surface of this modifier and gets reflected towards the subject or the shot. Reflected light is a little bit softer than the original source of the light, unless it is reflected through a mirror. Of course, reflectors are one of the modifiers that can be used in combination with film lights or natural available light in the outdoors. What you could also do with these is change the temperature of the light that is being reflected, the gold color to reflect the light a little bit warmer, the silver to reflect it a little bit bluer, and a white reflector would keep the reflected light as similar to the original source of light as possible. 
The cool thing about this lighting modifier is, is that you can find it in anything. You can use a white paper, a white cardboard, you can use some uh, kitchen foil, you could use a plain white wall to reflect the light. It's endless how creative you can get with reflectors as long as you keep them in mind when shooting. Okay, haze and smoke. Surprised? Well, they are also light modifiers because they alter the quality of the lights. Haze is an additional element that we use in cinematography to add that final touch to our shot. What Haze does is add a bit of texture into your shot through atmosphere. But the most important thing that Haze does for me is actually accentuate the depth in our frame. When Haze adds texture to the rooms that you're filming, it creates different layers of vision that is very realistic in a way that the close objects are so much clearer than the objects far away or at the back of our frame which is exactly what we see in real life. Of course, one of the main things that haze and smoke do is accentuating light rays. The way this works is that haze or smoke passes in front of this light beam and the haze particles get hit by that beam of light and start reflecting everywhere, which makes the beam or ray of light appear in your shot. Make sure you haze up your shots from the deep background of your frame. Now, another lighting modifier, colored gels. These gels are becoming kind of useless because what light manufacturers are doing, specifically LED light manufacturers, are including hundreds and hundreds of colors in their lights. And you could change these colors so fast without having the hassle of putting a gel on. Cinefoil or black wrap is a super handy light modifier. What it is, is just a roll of foil that is painted matte black. And what that does is that it can block any light that hits it. The nice thing about black wrap is it's very small form factor, plus its ability to be bent into different shapes that are perfect for blocking small sources of light, like practicals in a room, saving you the hassle of putting up a big black flag on a C-stand that's gonna get in the way of your filming anyways. Diffusion cloths and diffusion boxes. Diffusion boxes come in different sizes, and they are the ideal light modifier if you wanna turn a small, harsh source of light into a big, soft source. The way these boxes work is that they have a reflective surface inside them that causes the light to jump around that box and fill up the whole front element which is the diffusion sheet. Another way of creating diffusion is using diffusion cloths. The main diffusion fabric that we use in the filmmaking industry is called muslin fabric and it works exactly the same as a soft box but instead of installing it straight on the light you have to put it in front of it. This also has its very important uses because maybe you want a huge source of light made out of a big piece of fabric. In addition to that, a diffusion cloth that is separated from the light gives you the control of moving it closer or further away from that light, making the light either harder or softer depending on what you want. Both of these diffusions also come in levels like quarter, half, full and double, and what they do is they cut the intensity of the light too. Last one, Fresnel lenses. These are the shit, because they have a nice glass lens that works on shaping the light and turning it into this like narrower, controllable beam. These lenses could be also focused to give you even more control over the shape of the light. Modifiers are super cool, but what's the point of understanding them if you don't know how to light? Watch this video on key lighting right now to change the way you light your scenes. Now thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button, and until next time, say stuff out.